Welcome to our lecture on 1940s fashion for our History of Fashion course. So the first thing we need to talk about is obviously what happened right before the 40s, which is the beginning of World War II, uh, which lasted from 1939 to 1945. And um, I included several pictures and posters so this is Pearl Harbor, um, and it's not a, an interpretation, it's actual photographs. Um, this was taken uh, December of 1941. So there's uh, ads and posters that I'm sharing with you. Um, as you can see, this was the reality. Instructions to all persons of Japanese ancestry living in the following areas. So you can see. Um, and these were the posters. You can see the advertisements. So women needed to go to work because the main breadwinners were drafted to the war and um, as you can see a lot of these posters these advertisements um, and you see this replicated time and time again um, um, encouraging women to get to work and doing um, some of the factory work that uh, the main breadwinner was doing at the time so um, you can see a lot of these uh, posters encouraging uh, women to work. Um, also, as you will see on rationing and mending, this is one of the most famous ones, right? We can do it. I think every Halloween party has someone dressed like that. But look, you can see what they were dressed as. This is where um, you see a lot of the uniform uh, mentality, and this is where you see a lot of the mass production and things made very in a similar fashion. So these are actual uh, uh, pictures. Um, there was a lot of limitations, um, particular, uh, particularly with silk. Silk was used for parachutes. Um, shoes that had rubber and leather were rationed. So that was another thing that was uh, very limited. You had to ration uh, food. You had to, they encouraged you to turn in the oil um, that they could use for bombs. Um, see, like it says, food is a weapon. Don't waste it, but wisely cook carefully, eat it all. So see, it was like rationing, make do with what you had. Um, it, it would tell you, like, look at these ads, eat more corn and oats and rye, um, eat less uh, wheat, meat, sugar, and fat. So all this was limited to, to save for the arm, army and our allies. Um, so this is not, you know, fictional, this is actual ads. Men in tanks must eat quickly and well, do with less so they'll have enough. See, do with less so they'll have enough. That was a very common um, type of message, see, save waste fast for explosives, take them to your meat dealer. Uh, when you ride alone, you ride with Hitler, so join a car sharing club today, that's an actual poster advertisement uh, to promote car, um, you know, carpooling. So, bottom line, 1940s. The key word, like I mentioned in the previous lecture, is utility, okay? Utility, utility, utilitarian, practicality, that's what the name of the game was. So very uh, practical, utilitarian, uh, very much based on the military look. Um, the overall silhouette, almost everything had this silhouette, so it looked very similar. It's broad shoulders, slim hips, small narrow waist, slim hips. Now they passed a law called the L85, and this is what was a rationing law, and it restricted uh, sales of yardage of material. So you cannot buy more than two and a half yards. Now for any of you that sew, that's not a lot of material. Think about what a yardstick looks like, no more than two and a half. So the idea of these big long skirts and dresses, you would need three to four yards minimum, usually five. So two and a half is half that. Um, so clearly um, that had a direct consequence to the silhouette, in particular with women that automatically meant that the skirt had to be shorter. So when people say, oh, the skirts got shorter because they wanted to show leg, that's not what it was. It was due to practicality of using less fabric. So what had nothing to do with showing skin and showing leg, it had everything to do with being practical because you couldn't use as much fabric. This is one of the few things where I will require you to remember the number, which is two and a half yards was the maximum uh, yardage. Now, what's interesting about the 40s is that this, it was the beginning of the zoot suit. Uh, it's the first example of trickle-up fashion. So if you ever talk about uh, fashion adoption theories, so we're talking about trends, right? Usually it comes from the top down. We have three main 
uh, fashion adoption theory. So it's uh, trickle down uh, or from the top down, trickle across and, and trickle up. And usually trends come from the top. So people that are influential, people that have money, celebrities, designers, that's usually where the trends start. Um, but this time, this is one of the first true examples of trickle up uh, fashion where um, it actually came from the streets. Young men on the streets were tired of the look that, you know, the rationing look that they um, had to incorporate. And they came up with kind of a zany looking suit. And that, and then it was taken by designers and um, it was copied. So that was trickle up. So that's interesting about the 40s. Um, now, government had to intervene and they did set regulation. Here you had uh, heavy regulations. So again, heavy regulations restricting the amount of fabric and not just in women's garments, but men's as well. Okay, so the idea was um, changing the amount of fabric. So as you can see, um, it was very limited. Again, broad shoulders, narrow waist, narrow hips. Okay, so not a curvy silhouette, but it did have wide shoulders and a slim waist. So as you can see these styles right here, this is from Women's Wear, I love this if you're into fashion, Women's Wear Daily from 1943. Um, the diagram of the new L85 order clarifies fundamental changes. See, so it tells you the length, okay, and how much fabric you can use and uh, due to the limitations. Uh, again, rationing, mending, make do with what you have. So see, use it up, wear it out, make it do. Our labor and our goods are fighting. See, so these were actual ads. Make do and mend. Unpick and knit again. Where's that moth? Decorative patches. If your garment has a hole, it has needs to repair, repair it. Um, in fact, this was interesting. So for young, young women, they push so much the, you know, kind of DIY, make do with what you have, that they would show you how to make, they call them gay bras. Um, and it, cause it has no support, no support at all, but it was taking like these, uh, uh, fairly large, uh, fabric napkins or taking like tablecloths and cutting them up and turning them into like shorts and bras and how to tie them up. So it would literally tie like a little knot and off, obviously show no support, but you know, make a skirt out of your tablecloth. The idea was make do with what you have. Um, so you would see a lot of these kind of photographs and a lot of these kind of, uh, see, rescue remnants. So that was like the big key uh, overall message was to mend, to make do. Um, you're not buying new clothes left and right. It was uh, make do with what you had, make do with what you had. Now, a big thing that changed because of the silk rationing was um, you couldn't have silk stockings anymore. So they used wool and cotton and that is not comfortable. Um, they did use some rayon, uh, again, nylon wasn't readily available, and what you have to understand, which is not relatable now, but women didn't leave the house, or even, you know, would put out, because, you know, most of them would not wear pants, most of them would wear dresses, and you would not dare to step outside without wearing your nylons, you would wear your nylons, that's what, you know, your stockings, you had to, and it was, you know, you, they'd be held up with garters, and most of them had that seam in the back. So what they started doing, they had to go out bare legged um, or use some of that uncomfortable hosiery made out of wool, which was not comfortable. They would start drawing the seam in the back to make it look like they were wearing stockings. And again, that's why you did start seeing more pants being worn because um, it was just embarrassing. But look, they would draw the seam line to mimic the look of stockings. I mean, because you just, you didn't leave the house without wearing your stockings. You just didn't. Um, it's not like today. The hosiery, really, you know, department really, you know, market has really uh, been hit hard because, you know, you don't wear it unless you wear like, you know, the opaque. Um, but that wasn't how it was back then. You wear, you would wear them. Um, all women would wear it. So this was huge for them not to be able to wear it. And that's why pants finally kind of took on, uh, uh, you know, more power because they were tired of wearing um, their dresses without their stockings. The undergarments got very simplified, obviously, um, very simple chemises. And as you can see, the silhouette, whether it's like the belted jacket with the skirt or a dress, um, they're very similar. Just you look at it, very similar. Small little hats. Um, you still dressed up though. It wasn't, and this was considered a more casual look, but basically again, the wide shoulders, small waist, and small hips.
So as you can see, see this? All these silhouettes, if you look, the same. Now once in a while you can get a little bit more width on the skirt, not a whole lot more. They ended up right under the knee, right under the knee. So as you can see, because of that rationing, the hem skirt went up. So it wasn't because they wanted to show skin. It, quite the contrary, they were embarrassed that they didn't have stockings most of the time. Um, but it was to use less fabric, okay? So, so all these posters, all these photographs and diagrams give you an idea of, of the silhouette and what they um, had to wear, okay? So very similar. See, as you can see, and very modest, very modest. You didn't show a lot of skin. This is as much skin as you're gonna see on the neckline. Um, a lot of long sleeve. You did have some short sleeve, but again, the skirt ended right below the knee. Okay, and as you can see, casual wear. This is as casual as it got. So it's very dressed up compared to our standards, I think. Our standards today, casual is like workout clothes, but um, this is as casual as it would get. Okay, but, um, and even the casual wear, they, they raise the hem ever so slightly. You would, you would see some short sleeve. Um, this is like swimwear and day wear. Um, this would be considered evening wear. This is at, as glammed up and glit glitzy as you would get. Um, for somewhat wealthy but average person. Um, they did have some uh, gowns cut longer. Um, ideally, they loved cutting the gown on the bias cut, but it was very expensive, so didn't always work out that way. Um, but you did see some beautiful, some designers really did create some beautiful looks um, to kind of, again, offer some escapism. So just know restrictions effectively froze the, the style lines for the entire duration of the war. There were no changes or shifts in silhouette during the entire World War II. Um, again, Paris got cut off from being the fashion capital of the world and uh, countries turned to their local talent. And America turned to you know, American designers uh, to look at some innovation but even so during that war everything this was the look this was the silhouette it did not change and what you have to understand is it's it's hard for us to picture because obviously we know what happened but there was a time where it did look really bleak the, things were really rough and they didn't know it, it for a while there it did look it was touch and go and it did look like the nazis were going to win um hitler was going to win so those were really dark times. That's why there's this, I don't know, there's a somber, you can see it. There's a somberness in, in the look. There's a sophistication, but there's a seriousness. There's a somberness there. There was, you could see it. Um, that's why there's kind of the opposite, as you'll see with the 50s. And some people find it very annoying. I get students all the time and are like, I don't know. I, they either love it or you hate it. Because a lot of people do find it kind of annoying with the poodle skirt and the dancing and what you have to understand, it, it was, it did get so dark and it, it was so bleak. And like I said, I mean, I know you're restricted now. We have a shutdown and, you know, you have to wear a mask, but you could still wear what you want, basically. Imagine that you couldn't. Um, they had a lot of restrictions. So once that restriction, that L85 was taken out, um, that's why you see those puddle skirts in the 50s with so much fabric. They were just like, oh my gosh, there's no restriction. And they were so happy. And that's why you see all that dancing and and joyous uh, celebrating. But as you can see, it's very serious here and, and you can feel it. You can see it, you can feel it. All right, that concludes part one and we will conclude with um, part two.